up here. Katie Sackhoff and Jamie Mamre. Isn't 
she's talented. I don't know. <laughs> It was fun in a strange way. They, they, uh, 
it was scary at first. There weren't, no people was talking and we were hustled out of a bus and ordered to line up and it, it, it was like, I don't know, we were in the middle of nowhere too. We'd been driven on down the freeway for about two hours in Vancouver. I'd never been to Vancouver before. I didn't know where we were in the woods. It felt all wrong. In the today. woods. Wrong. We were in the middle of nowhere. Is that a 7 Eleven? <laughs> <laughs> but then by the end of it, it, it you know, the, the fear factor had worn off and Ron Blecker, who was running the thing, who was a former ranger, was really mean at first and like a drill instructor and like shouting at We us. thought we were going to die. Yeah, I did feel like, I don't know, and Michael Reimer, the benevolent Australian director whose idea this was, and waved us off sort of nicely, but he had no idea where we were going like that. As far as I was concerned, you know, we could have been abducted and a strange man was telling us strange things and calling, we had to call him Master Chief, which I thought was odd. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of weird, and, uh, and then I learned that Candace can't run at all. <laughs> we had yeah. to do laps. It was <laughs> so a Candace big... can't run. Okay, she Candace came to her. She was right at the back, and she just can't run. <laughs> <laughs> I was... thought that was intriguing. It was funny too, because we had to do um, the the obstacle course, yeah. and the captains had to pick teams. And I don't even remember who the captains were, but it literally was Tomo and all the girls on one team, and then all the boys on the other team. But I think you. Maybe had Candace on your team. I'm not sure. We had to carry her, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. But we, really we won because we all shoved Tomo over the huge wall and then he just stayed at the top and went, whoop! <laughs> like, we were like, there were legs, like legs flying over the top of the wall and we won because of that. <laughs> Tomo's never stopped doing that since. <laughs> My, my first day on set, though, was my birthday, I do remember that, oh. and um, I remember, uh, well, I was, I was convinced I was going to be fired um, <laughs> from, from the time that Edward James almost got cast as my dad, um, <laughs> and then I met him, and it was immediately apparent, apparent to me that he'd asked for me to be fired. Um, <laughs> so I got, it was my birthday, I got to my trader, and there was a bottle of champagne there, and I thought that they're buying me off already. <laughs> Set, and I think David Icke was there, and he, he, he showed up, he's the producer, and I thought, oh no, it's going to fire me. And it went on and on all day long, and uh, I felt like that all the way through the miniseries, actually. But yeah, my birthday was the first day, and we should cut to the end. Yeah. The last bit was, um, what was it like? It was, it was like, because um, we were away in uh, the Okanagan. No. Where were we? Oh, well, sorry, no, was... I mean, we were, we were shooting at the Okanagan, but the last day was on set. Oh, the set. last day was on set, and it was two units, and you all finished and went off to the bar when I was still there. No, I actually went home. That's what, the, the one thing that I remember about the end is that when we wrapped, it was like five in the morning, six yeah. in the morning, and I wrapped and I just left. Like, I didn't even say goodbye to anybody, and... No, it was, it was an empty climate. <laughs> it was very weird. We'd already had the wrap party. Yeah. So it was really strange. We were running over, probably, and it was like five. And I was doing a second unit running around the, um, what do you call that shit with the silence there? I don't remember. <laughs> Anybody? The base star. Base star. Running around the base star shooting like people with, with some supporting actors and none of the main casts. And, and we'd gone on longer than the main unit. And all day long was just this sort of, you know, pictures and signing things and just hugging everyone. And it was very emotional, but it did go on way too long. And I had to catch a flight back to LA with my family, I think three hours after, so it was a strange kind of shuffle out the back door. Um, a bit like my first day where I was convinced I was going to be shuffled out the back door. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully it wasn't. Yeah, good question. Sorry, I myself laugh. Thank you guys. Thank you. We could have answered that in like one sentence. <laughs> 20 minutes. With a moderator. <laughs> right. my, name, my name's Haley, and um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Katie a number of times, so my question is for uh, Jamie. I was just wondering, um, the arc of your character, obviously, since you didn't think you'd make it through the miniseries, um, but did you have any idea, as Lee developed, you know, that you would end up the president? No, of course not. You were the president? <laughs> I also have to recommend that you guys watch the show. <laughs> Um, 
No, I, I, I had no idea. I mean, going back to your question, I think you had a question then. Other than making me feel stupid. <laughs> um, no, I mean, none of us at the beginning knew, you know, where we were going to go. I, I, honestly, I didn't think really much beyond my first day, let alone the miniseries. And we, we very nearly didn't get picked up to a series. So there, there are many sort of stages along the way where I realised that the show changed for me. And, um, you know, getting there for season one and to start properly making a series in the US for the first time for me was really very exciting. And, uh, no, I had no idea. Other than, you know, Lee wasn't very comfortable in his flight suit, so I knew that maybe, you know, as we kept going, I, I think I pushed them and begged them to sort of change things for me because, you know, I mean, when making a saga like this, there's very few people, it's, there are other challenges for someone like Lee who's ambitious and doesn't, you know, never felt right in, in the uniform. So I wasn't altogether surprised that I went down different routes, but to end up, you know, being the president and stuff for a nano, it wasn't for very long, was it? Was it, wasn't Mark Shepard the president at the end? Yes. Yes, you see? Yes, he was. He was the president. Hayley, wake up, watch the show. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. But, um, it, it, you know, there was a moment in season one where the show had started to come out and, and, and then the, the sort of... Um, the, sort of highfalutin press started noting how topical and how you know challenging it was to what and, and I was like yes I sort of felt it was kind of but it was really weird to have the people that you respect kind of say that back and then it transformed and so no I none of us had any idea that we'd be taken as seriously as and we then were. we wanted Peabody. We wanted like, Peabody, whatever that meant. But with South Park, so I mean yeah. <laughs> it was the same year as South Park, so I think they were trying to diversify. Yeah, and then, and then, they, yeah, they turned into fans, right? they were fans, yeah. so that was really yeah. tricky for me. Yeah, yeah it was so really great. Interesting. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, it, it was a revelation, a constant revelation, really. Thank you, and thank you for bringing us such a beautiful piece of television. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hello, I'm a fan of both of your new shows, Monday Mornings and Longmire. And uh, my, my quick questions are about both of those. Jamie, did you lose a foot race with Alfred Molina and that's why you have to take an American accent? <laughs> and, and I don't think I could lose a foot race to Alfred Molina if I tried. <laughs> um, bless Fred. But hey, 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 I think he would admit he's not an athlete. <laughs> I know Fred. And after this morning, he was a naysayer nice about the London Olympics. Fred, if you're out there, we proved you wrong. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I, I actually would have been upset had I... I love doing American accent. I love um, living in the States. I am an American, very proud, and uh, uh, it's nice for me not to sort of wear kind of my differences as a badge. I, I kind of enjoy being, you know, just being under the radar and not, not being British. There's so many Brits around anyway, it's kind of almost not to be <laughs> noticed as one of them. So no, not at all. I was very, very adamant that I, I would be American, and the character that Sanjay wrote was Californian specifically, and I, you know, uh, I, I wanted to stay true to that character. And Katie, um, you were in our, okay, one of the Longmire episodes and in, involved fracking. <laughs> how how no. surreal no. was that? No. Hey, no. How no. surreal was that to have everyone swearing around you on the set? <laughs> you know, what's funny is that's the second time that I've done that. Um, I did, um, two of our writers from Battlestar went to CSI um, after, and I was in LA, um, literally between movies, and had like two months off, and didn't want to, I wasn't going to work, and they were like, well, what if it's in LA? I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I went and I worked, I did the three episodes of CSI, and one of the episodes of that was actually about fracking as well. So, <laughs> I've already done it. <laughs> um, it's weird because, like, I didn't, you know, I tweeted a picture with me holding the sign that said something about frack, and I thought I was being ironic, and then somebody started yelling at me for being political on Twitter, and I was like, <laughs> can't win. Um, so, um, I don't know, it's funny, because for me, I I've never said frack in my actual, like, life. I've always been a fan of the actual word. Um, I've, been using it for quite a long time. My mouth has been washed out with soap many times by my mother, from the time I was probably 13. 
Um, and I've just gotten better at it since I've gotten older. So, um, <laughs> to, to have, uh, to have, like, I don't know, like, the fracking was funny because, like, everybody, like, all the extras on set wanted pictures with me with their signs. And, so, I don't know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of nice. But there's a lot of people that watch Longmire that have no idea what Battle Star is. So. No. <laughs> the, the first time I was listening to NPR, and there was, there was, I just turned it on, I don't know what camera, and I was having NPR, and I was just driving, and they started talking about the problem with fracking going on all across the southern states, <laughs> especially in Texas. I thought, like, NPR's like doing a whole piece on, 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 on Battlestar, and I listened to this thing, and it was like left, right, and center, or something like that, which is a show where you get a right wing, a left wing, and someone in the middle, and they were having this debate about fracking. This is this is this is something else. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Ron right now. We've really hit it here. Like we've got the politicos are debating um, about the stuff. And it, it took me literally a 20 minute drive to work out they're talking about natural gas and not, and not natural gasps. Um, very disappointing that the world has moved on and fracking now means the other thing and not our thing. Right? Thank you. Appreciate y'all showing up. Uh, my name is Sam. Hi, Sam. From the, the, the arc of the show, so many different tendrils coming around the show. So many different storylines. At the end of this, at, at, I guess in the, in the season finale, everything kind of had a piece together. What were y'all thoughts on how everything ended up in the, in the season finale? The, the series finale? Yeah. Um. But, but basically with, with Katie, with, with kind of right. your, your fate, whatever that really meant. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, how, how Lee ended up doing whatever he did. <laughs> doing whatever the hell he was doing. We, uh, we, we kept joking that I should lay down in the grass, and then, like, as he's looking around, like, no, and then I pop up and go, just kidding. <laughs> we just watched me wander off, and then gradually get up, and then I have to see that guy again. <laughs> And then Mary McDonald high fives me. Yeah. She's like, we really pulled the wool over their eyes. Um, I, I was happy with the way Starbuck ended because I thought that they, there was really no way to kind of explain that and, and wrap it up. I mean, I think that to, to go and dig deeper into all the mythology that was just that character, it would have needed another two hours, you know, and they just didn't have the time. Um, that was one thing. The one thing I didn't that I wasn't okay with was that she had kind of no um, emotional resolution to take with her into this afterlife event of whatever, wherever she went or whatever she is. Um, and so I had that scene with Sam. Um, um, kind of rewrote that a little bit um, and we put in, there was supposed to be no dialogue in that scene and he and I added all that dialogue because I wanted her to kind of um, I wanted to leave that character happy to a certain, not even happy, happy is the wrong word, I guess um, centered and complete, at least in one part of her life. Um, yeah, so I don't know, that's the only thing I changed, just because I wanted, I wasn't happy with that. So. Uh, I, I loved it, I loved everything about it. Um, you know, I, I, it's an extraordinary. I haven't seen the end of Breaking Bad, um, so don't tell me what happened. <laughs> I'm a season behind, but everyone seems to be delighted with how that ended, and then they're talking about how the perfect way to end the show, whatever that was, I don't know. I'll find out. Um, and then I'll be able to answer the question a little better. But I, I, I loved it because, I, you know, if the show was had, had some purity, it was, you know, the, the, that, that mantra that Ron kept on writing about all these things happened before and will happen again. And I just loved the way he went back to the beginning, or just before the beginning, and looked at the characters from before the series started, and you had that sense of, you know, they'd, they'd arrived at Terra Firma, they were, they were on a place they could call home, and they had to look to the future for the first time, and, you know, and he took us all back to where we started, and all these characters were saying goodbye, but starting new stories, and, you know, for Lee, I thought, you know, I thought it made sense, he was having to be his own person, waving goodbye to his dad and his mum, and, and his, um, the, you know, the, the, the love that he never quite had, and, who's already dead, let's not forget. Um, and I thought it was something very beautiful and very sort of meditative about, you know, her being around for him always and, you know, and her physical presence not, you know, necessarily being there, but she she exists for him always. And, and you know, then everything else that was in the ending, what was that? I don't know, James walking down New York, all that.
that kind of stuff. I liked it. I, I thought it was beautiful, and um, it had lots of resonances for us as as a sort of family of actors who were saying goodbye and starting new things and you know moving on in different directions. I thought it was uh, yeah pretty sublime, but I know not everyone agrees.